Hey friends, welcome back to another What's for Dinner. I've got some quick, easy, delicious meals to share with you this week. And before we get started, I just want to say very happy Father's Day to my own father and my father-in-law and to all the fathers out there watching today. So let's hop in and get ready for some good food. The first meal I'm bringing you this week is the long-awaited Aldi Red Bag Chicken. And we also had these Kroger Panko Breaded Onion Rings. These things are so good. I believe this is about the fourth bag of them that I've bought. And you all definitely need to hit your Kroger's and try these. I cooked everything in the oven tonight just according to the bag directions. I did have a package of brioche rolls from Aldi. I keep hearing about this Chick-fil-A sauce shortage. I think I know what's happened. Does everybody have a big container of takeout sauce that they keep in their fridge? Mine definitely needs a little reorganization. We loved this chicken. This is the closest I've ever had to the Chick-fil-A. I've tried Sam's, I've tried Tyson's, I've tried them all. They're all pretty good, but this is the closest to actual Chick-fil-A that I've had yet. So my recommendation is two thumbs up, Aldi Red Bag Chicken. I will be repurchasing this. So the first real meal of the week is going to be creamy crock pot pork chops. And this is all you need. Um, these few ingredients here and you'll have to forgive me I was doing this one-handed in the morning before I went off to work but I just sprayed my crock pot put in my cream of mushroom soup and a can of chicken broth poured in a regular package of the pork dry gravy mix and a package of dry Lipton onion soup mix mix all that up and then I place my pork chops in the crock pot. Now if I have time, I'll throw a little butter and oil in a pan and brown them up before I put them in here. But today, it was Monday. I just needed to get these things in the crock pot and get on to work. So it was fine. It tastes good either way. Just get them as covered as you can. I throw a little garlic powder on there because I did forget to season them before I put them in. So this probably cooked for about eight hours or so and they were just perfect. So once I got home, I thought we've got gravy, we got to have some mashed potatoes. So I just took me about I don't know, four or six regular old potatoes. Just peeled them up real good. Sometimes I peel my potatoes before I mash them. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just use instant. But I had plenty of potatoes and I had the time, so. Once I got my potatoes all peeled up, I just started chopping them up into pretty uniform size pieces so they would all cook up pretty much about the same time. Rinse them off real good, throw them in the pot, cover them in water, and just let them cook until they're fork tender. As soon as I got my potatoes going, I decided to make some of the three ingredient dinner rolls. I can't remember if I've had that in a video before, but they're super quick, so I'll just show them to you here again tonight. You start out with just a cup of flour, just plain old self-rising flour if you have it. If not, you can throw you in some salt and baking powder with regular flour. Then you're going to add two big tablespoons of mayonnaise and about a half a cup of milk. You can do these like drop biscuits, but I just prefer to spray a muffin tin and I get about five biscuits out of this mix right here. So this is perfect for our family. And it helps us not overeat on them because we are bad. As many rolls as there are to be sitting around, we'll just keep nibbling on them. So this is perfect for us. And I do like to bake them up in a muffin tin. Then whenever you have gravy, you know you want mashed potatoes and some kind of bread to dip it in. 
Once I got my rolls in the oven, I decided I needed to fix up a little bit of thickening for my gravy. So I just threw in two or three tablespoons full of flour, and then I just stirred in a little bit of water to make a slurry, and I dropped that in my crock pot and stir it in, and then crank that back up on high for just a few minutes, and it will thicken that gravy just right up. About 15 or 20 minutes in the oven and these rolls come out so pretty. Just wanted to show you how light and fluffy they are. They're like a real light and fluffy biscuit roll hybrid. So now the potatoes are good and fork tender so I've just drained them off and throw them in a big old bowl here. And I just take my little smasher and mash them up a little bit. The first thing that I do is throw in about half a block of cream cheese. That'd be about four ounces. I just kind of cut it into fourths and then I'll use about a half a stick of butter. Kind of cut it in half and put it in there too. Add some salt and pepper. And then I'll just mash it up just a little bit more. Once I get everything kind of broken up a little bit, then I pour in milk or heavy cream, whatever you've got. I believe here I had some heavy cream that I needed to get used up. So it's whipping cream actually. So that's what I poured in. I just always start out with a little and get it you know mashed in and then mixed up and um, just add more as you need just depending on if you like your mashed potatoes really creamy or a little stiffer um, or a little lumpy you just make it to your liking and once you get them mixed up I always do a little taste test and see if I need anything else and I believe this night I did come in with a little extra salt it takes a little bit to get potatoes good and salty when you're mashing them. So let's plate it all up tonight. I had some green beans and some steamed corn in the microwave. And then that is the yummy cracked out pea salad. If you have not seen that recipe, I'll leave it in a card above and I'll have that recipe linked below for my summer salads. Now the next night we had simple meal, just spaghetti and salad. And I just wanted to show you how I make my spaghetti sauce. This is what I call my homemade sauce, but it's semi-homemade, I guess. I think the trick are these thick and zesty spaghetti sauce seasoning mix. I love this stuff. Brown up one pound of hamburger meat and drain off your grease. And then you're going to put in two of the six ounce cans of tomato paste. And I figure, you know, a half a pound of meat is not much. So I just go ahead and do a double run of this. And then I'll show you here after we get it cooled how I like to freeze my spaghetti sauce, my chilies, anything like that that I'm making. But anywho, you drop in the two cans, two six ounce cans of tomato paste, and then for each can you add in a cup and three fourths of water. So you're gonna see me do that twice. And then it's just the magic thick and zesty spaghetti seasoning mix. I love the flavor of this and it really does thicken up as it cooks. I'll just show you here I'm like a child. I don't like spaghetti noodles. You know I cook special things or I don't make my family eat things that they don't like because I'm not going to eat stuff I don't like. I just be honest I don't like the looks and I don't like the texture of spaghetti noodles and I don't eat it which is fine, it don't bother me a bit, but I like this thick hearty meat sauce, 
so that's what when we have spaghetti that's what I eat I have a big salad and some bread and meat sauce that's fine with me that's how I like it so that's what I do so here you are just gonna get your tomato paste all broken down in there just kind of whisk it around and I have you know pretty low little simmer And you want to be sure and use a pot that has a lid on it because this stuff will get to popping everywhere. You know how spaghetti sauce is. And you do have to let it simmer for, you know, a good 15 minutes or so so that it can get thickened up and all the flavors come together. And this is always better the second day, too. So there's either my husband or my daughter's plate. I don't even know whose that was spaghetti and meat sauce and some garlic bread and there's my picky plate next I've just got the sauce and bread and a big salad but it tastes delicious to me that's how I like it now here once everything cools I just want to show you how I store my sauces I just take a big freezer bag and dump all that extra spaghetti sauce in it I'll get all the air out of it and lay it flat on a sheet pan and I'm going to stick it in the freezer on that sheet pan, you can see it there behind those french fries, till it gets frozen. Once it does, I'll show you some examples here in the front of my freezer. Here is some chili from March that I made. Look how skinny that is. It doesn't take up any room in the freezer. And then over here is some taco meat I made this month that I had extra. I like to cook once and eat out of it a couple times. So you can see that didn't take up very much room at all. Now the next night of the week, I'm going to start out by making some tartar sauce. I used to buy tartar sauce and it would just go bad. It didn't really taste that good. So I just started whipping this up. I never knew how easy it was to make a little tartar sauce. But I threw in here about a half a cup of mayonnaise. And then just a nice spoonful of sweet pickle relish just a very small squirt of mustard and just a very few little drops of lemon juice I'm just making enough for me and my husband just to have this one night when I'm making fish of any kind I'll just do this first and get it put up in the refrigerator so we it can be getting good and cold and tonight I'm doing my own take on salmon patties. I'm making tuna patties. Basically, if I made salmon, it would be this very same recipe. But I start out, I had some real pretty green onions. I a fourth more or less to your taste. I took one of the bigger cans of tuna. It's a 12 ounce can. Drained it really well and then kind of flaked it up. Then I'm going to beat one egg down to kind of help bind everything together. And I use a fourth of a cup of cornmeal and a fourth of a cup of flour. And some pepper and just a little bit of salt. Really don't need much salt at all. And then I did throw in um, probably three tablespoons of mayonnaise there and the green onions. And I'm just mixing all of that together. I put just a little bit more flour in uh, salmon patties or tuna patties here it's just one of those things you just kind of got to feel it you don't want it to be too runny that it won't stick together and patty but you don't want it dry either so here I'm just kind of showing you um, the size of the patties that I made and you can see I've got some butter and just a little bit of oil in my cast iron skillet over there heating up. And this made four really good sized patties. Now, the reason I don't use salmon, I love salmon patties. And my mom made them when I was growing up. But you know, whenever I told her, um, one day I said, Mom, I'd like to try to make some salmon patties for uh, me and Patrick. And she said, you won't like it. And I said, yes, I do. I like yours. And she said, no, I'm telling you, you won't like dealing with that salmon. I thought, well, it's just in a can like tuna. You know, Mama was right. I couldn't stomach it. 
I just could not deal with the bones in that skin. She was right. I couldn't handle it. So this is why I make tuna patties. And I think they're every bit as good as a salmon patty. They are to me because I'm the one that's having to deal with them and put them together. But here you see them. Oh, they just fried up so pretty and brown and crispy. And we had some fried okra over here. And that was just frozen out of a bag. And I just fried it up on top of the stove in some grease. And then drained all these good fried things off on some paper towels. I tried some sweet potato fries with this. Because um, I really wanted something sweet potato and some green beans. To end up here tonight... Just a real simple meal. I was just not feeling the best. I had a couple of those uh, brioche buns and I just threw some ham and some cheese on them. Stuck that down in the oven and got it crispy. And this was so good. So these were our meals for the week. I had an easy week. I really just had this one meal that was much uh, labor intensive at all. But everything tastes good from... The spaghetti to the crock pot meal that red bag chicken was delicious and the tuna cakes I loved them and I hadn't had them in such a long time I thank you for joining me tonight remember if you like this video to give it a big thumbs up that really helps my channel out be sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys for a Walmart haul on Wednesday and next Sunday for another What's for Dinner. And until then, I send you love from my kitchen.